Hey, Paul, did you know that according to podcastinsights.com, as of January 2021, there are over 1.75 million podcasts, totaling more than 43 million episodes. And that, those numbers are just on Apple Podcasts. They don't include Spotify or Google Podcasts or other hosting sites. So it's easy to say that Creating and posting a podcast has become a very popular way to communicate ideas. Jason, did you know in 2005, the term podcast earned the title of New Word of the Year by the American Oxford Dictionary? Now it's been 16 years later, and you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't know what or has listened to a podcast. Right. The question is no longer, hey, do you know what a podcast is? Rather, it has become, do you have a podcast? In May of 2010, Continuing Education Workforce Training launched Sweet Talk, our own podcast. And we have produced close to 100 episodes spanning over three seasons. We've learned a few things all along the way, made a few mistakes, and we were thinking, maybe it's time we just share with people what we learned in hopes that they might get help and benefit them as well. Yeah, um, in this Sweet Talk special series, a podcast about podcasting by podcasters uh, essentially is just that, sharing the lessons we have learned in hopes of someone getting benefits or help from our own podcast. This series will consist of five parts, and each part is focusing on answering one of the following questions. Why do a podcast? How to do a podcast? Who to do a podcast for? how to host your podcast, and what to do with that podcast once you have it existing. So we hope that you enjoy this special series of Sweet Talk and that you'll find some help in creating your own podcast. Be sure to check out additional episodes in this series and then let us know what you think. Let us know if you've had success, if it was helpful, or if we sent you down the wrong path. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear them. And so with that all being said, it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. This is Jason Batalden, uh, the Assistant Director here at Continuing Education Workforce Training. Paul, how are you today? Fine, Jason. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing excited. You know what I'm excited for, Paul? What are you excited for? I'm excited that this is our fifth episode in our series, a podcast. Um, are you about gonna, podcasting by podcasters. By podcasters. And what I'm excited about is that when we started this, we just guessed how many episodes we were going to have. <laughs> we didn't really plan out five yeah. episodes. We just said, ah, five is a good number. I think five. I think five. Because we were going equipment, um, how to, why to. <laughs> and guess what? We are now at our fifth episode. And I think uh, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm overall really pleased. I want to kind of maybe uh, encourage all of our listeners, if they haven't had a chance to listen to the previous episodes, go ahead and give them a listen. I think uh, there you'll find some really excellent information about how to start a podcast. And I'm looking forward to today's cut discussion. Sure, is we're going to kind of have the, uh, we, we went to the, um, I guess, the theoretical conversations before, and now we're going to have a conversation about how it actually uh, pans out and works out. And, yeah, and yeah. Maybe, and and we, we get someone else's input. So maybe that's the real cool thing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and yes, they should be um, hopefully listening to the previous episodes if they haven't already. And hopefully that would help them avoid some mistakes that we made early on. That's right. And we're bringing on a podcast expert today. And I'm not sure he would, he didn't know he was a podcast expert, but I just decided to call him one um, because he has uh, experience doing this. So Mark, uh, Mark Beaver is uh, a career advisor in experiential learning uh, at the Career Center here at ISU. And Mark, you, first of all, say hello, but then also give us a quick rundown about uh, your kind of uh, experience doing podcasts. Awesome. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Beaver, and uh, I'm pleased to be here. Uh, I didn't know I was the fifth guest in the series. I didn't even know this was a series. Oh, yeah. Uh, First yeah, of all, this, yeah, yeah. you're the only guest. Yeah, you're the only <laughs> guest. Um, I mean, before, it was just Paul and I blabbing. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it's, a, it's a series. Um, you know, each part, we're, we're covering an aspect of podcasting. And we thought uh, we'd invite you, another podcaster, onto the show to just kind of reaffirm some of the things we've already yeah. been talking about. <laughs> and also well, maybe the point that's where we really messed up. I was going to say, hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully I can reaffirm some yes. of the things. Um, 
Uh, yeah, thank you. So um, a little bit about uh, how I met Paul and Jason, I guess, is um, most recently uh, we have been going through the process of trying to figure out how to start a podcast for our department. But so more specifically, my kind of history and interest in this is one, I'm just a big podcast fan. Um, I've been I listen to podcasts, have been for years. Um, I find the entire medium very exciting and interesting, just what it's doing to the media landscape, how kind of democratized it is. Um, and, you know, that has inspired me to, I've, I've worked with friends on, you know, all these like very DIY projects and uh, even did my, did my own at the beginning of the pandemic, which um, was just basically four friends. I kind of had a, very, a small mailing list that I sent it to um, that I did very DIY out of my, out of my VW van parked <laughs> in my driveway. <laughs> Because the acoustics are really good. I was going to say you talk about acoustics. The number one of the suggestions you read online across the board is the best environment uh, for DIY podcasts is your car. Uh, No no way, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say that uh, if you can sit in your car comfortably, you're right without having to run the air conditioners or whatever, and do it comfortable, uh, it's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, I mean, you know, I. I enjoyed doing it. I got some experience kind of tinkering around with it on my own. Thought it'd be a great medium to incorporate into our department to kind of get out our message and some, um, you know, just kind of general advertising as Mm -hmm. well as, you know, getting everybody in like what I like to think of as this kind of reflective uh, career mode, you know, across campus, just so that's kind of like a a web throughout Mm -hmm. campus really. And and well, these guys had a podcast, so I thought I'd give them a call and hear some of their uh, experiences. And yeah, it's been really, really enlightening as uh, we've kind of gone down this, um, gone down this road ourselves. Because I certainly can't just invite people out to my VW van. No, <laughs> no, no, that gets a little creepy. Yeah, I guess. A little uh, <laughs> but you know. Um, you kind of, I, I want to touch base back to kind of where you were uh, talking about a couple of things you brought up too, was the, um, would you, I think you used the word, the democratic mm-hmm. nature of a podcast mm-hmm. and um, talk to that a little bit. I, I, I like that. I think that was a point that Paul and I kind of alluded to in one of our previous podcasts, but I think you said it much better was, was, um, you know, I'm assuming telling stories and then letting you know, the listener decide if that's the stories they want to hear is, it's, is, is that what you mean by that, that democratic sure. process? De- def- definitely. Um, you know, and, you know, for better or for worse, I mean, I mean I'm going to go ahead and preface that too, but, right. you know, let's say traditionally in the media landscape, we had, you know, if you go way back, you have three television stations giving mm-hmm. you your news, um, maybe, four or five radio stations, uh, depending what, what, what kind of metropolitan area you live in. So all of your news, all of your information is filtered down through these media outlets who are basically organizations, corporations, they have their own filters, their own biases, et cetera. Um, their own sponsors, I mean, their they, own sponsors, they, they have, they have things to answer to, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, um, that is how everybody was given information for, you know, most of the information age, I guess. And, you know, along comes the internet kind of changes everything once again, for better or for worse. Um, And then podcasting kind of starts coming along. And I don't think anyone really knew what to make of it at first. It was like you were saying, like, as you were to Jason, like stories, I think is what we, Mm -hmm. a lot of the early podcasting and then interviews, just conversations. But basically we've gotten to this point, both with the acceptance of podcasting um, and how, like people's voracious appetite for podcasts and technology where basically anybody can make a podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you are hearing viewpoints across the entire spectrum. And sometimes that's amazing, right? Because then we're getting these uh we're getting these viewpoints these conversations from people that you would never heard before and they can be so enlightening and so inspiring 
and you know they, they completely open up i think the, the listeners um ability to to kind of take in different types of information at the same time there's a lot of misinformation and we said there's biases in the corporation well there's a lot of biases amongst uh the people who can get on a mic as well sure um yeah however you know i think the one i mean that's amazing right anyone can yeah. make a podcast basically right. i mean there is a little bit of that initial um learning curve and probably financial investment but if you can buy a macbook you, you can make a podcast you can right um, with almost nothing else. However, here comes the rub. How do you get people to listen to that? That's podcast? the truth. Yeah. Yeah. It, so, and that, that's the whole thing, uh, you know, the whole point of uh, social media and uh, um, the internet marketing is uh, you, you, you basically, you're not, you know, but previously, you know, people send out messages and embark, you know, and they're trying to send out messages to reach people and, Nowadays, what you do is you create content, hoping that people find you. Um, and, and, and because of the, that switch, yes, it's harder for people to find you. But when they finally do find you and it's something that they enjoy, then you've got loyal listeners, yeah. people who are there because they want to be there. They, they found you they, or they even sought you out and then they become loyal listeners. The, the, the trouble nowadays is because yeah, everyone – Everyone can make a podcast. <laughs> that means there's so many voices to be heard. Yes. Um, and how do you get, you know, and that's one thing is Jason and I have talked about previously is how do you get them to listen to you? Well, you know, and I, but, but again, we, I go back to kind of your point earlier, which is that democratic process. In other words, the people vote. Yes. And I, and I, so I think they're number one that comes back to you is how committed are you to your podcast? Um, in other words, um, it goes back to kind of, even you talked about in your, in your introduction and something that Paul and I talk about all the time, we love doing our podcast. Um, not only is it a, a, a nice, maybe, uh, outlet for Paul and I just on a creative level, but what it does, the way our podcast is set up is that we have the opportunity to, to run into other people's stories. Uh, we have an opportunity to listen to what other people have to say and that process alone is just beneficial to Paul and I, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so because we do that, we're committed to, you know, the podcast. And I think if, if your ultimate goal, if, if what you're really trying to do is to uh, get a, you know, 10,000 hits a month on your podcast channel, um, you're going to have to have something else working for you. Uh, you know, like a Joe Rogan guest or, a, you know, you know, and you're going to have to figure out something that gets you there. Uh, but, but, it, but eventually I do believe is that as long as you're putting out the content that people want to hear, because it is a democratic process, because people can find podcasts on any number of platforms that they'll, if you put it out there, they will eventually find it because that voracious appetite for podcasts. I mean, randomly speaking, how many podcasts do you listen to, or at least uh, attempt to listen to in a week? You know, I, I, I'm at four or five, you yeah. know, a week. You know, and and I, I also find it interesting how, you know, over time, there are some podcasts that I will listen to for two years, fairly religiously, and then just kind of phase out. Yep. Um, you know, and I'm sure other people come, like, I don't think those podcasters are, losing revenue um mm -hmm. by me leaving you know i'll just my interests will change i'll evolve as a person and um i will kind of be in, like a little more interested in some different subject matter possibly so that's that kind of part you know i think a lot of people might be afraid that you know how like is this medium saturated I mean, right like is it over is it oversaturated is there any reason how would i ever make money but i think those two things that that kind of combo of things that you both mentioned, um, you know, one, you got to get it out there, right? You got it. You have to take that. If, if you want people to listen, you got to put it out there. You got to get on social media, which I've never had social media personally. I hate the idea. <laughs> and so like that, like it's makes me cringe to think about, um, you know, advertising for myself in any way, but that is a good use of social media. Maybe one of the few. Um, two is, do you have something that people will want to listen to? And to cultivate that, I think you need to have that genuine interest. 
that mm-hmm. curiosity yep. um, that I think both of you, I think it comes through for both of you um, right away that I, I can tell that you're interested in these conversations. You're interested in people's stories. Yep. And, and that will, that, that genuine interest is, is going to help you rise to the top, yep. right? Because yep. there's a lot of stuff out there. If you get it out there, people hear it. If you are genuinely love, in love with what you do and that kind of comes through, then yeah, you're gonna you're going to find you're gonna rise up. Maybe not to the top, but <laughs> you're gonna, right. yeah. you're, well, gonna, you're gonna rise up to where you need to be. I think. I think that sincerity kind of uh, you know I, I've said this before in previous um, podcasts that it's a little different. Podcasts are different because most people listen to their podcasts um, with headphones, mm. and basically, with when you listen to something with headphones, you, you kind of make this instant intimate connection with the show you're listening to because you seem like it's almost like you're there and you're part of it. Um, and I think that if you're enthusiastic about what you're doing or what you're talking about or the subject matter, that's part of your podcast, that connection, first of all, um, that, that, that connection and they can hear that the, your listeners can hear that sincerity um, and, you know, decide to join, join along with you. Um, and I, I think that that comes through, because of the close proximity and the uh, uh, invitation that you've given them. Yeah. 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 I think the other side of this coin though, too, is I think they're also, I mean, podcasts are fun, especially if you uh, like to talk and you like to talk to other people or um, those types of things. But I think the other side of that component is you do have to put some work into it. Um, And you brought up the good point earlier, you know, anyone who can buy a MacBook. And that's not a plug towards Mac. Sorry, Paul. I know that's your favorite, but, um, you know, uh, you can get into it, but I mean, there still is some subtle things, right? I mean, number one, and, and Paul, um, you know, brought this to our podcast from the very beginning is quality of sound, mm. quality of sound. And that is something I've noticed in not only the podcast, you know, work and my other experience on, on other podcasts is that you have to put a little bit of effort um, into and a little bit of investment into ensuring that you are producing the best quality sound. Um, Because people people don't want to hear something when it's hard to hear. Um, And and that's the only format you have. I mean, granted, we, we do have a video component to our podcast, but the bottom line is it's static, right? We're sitting in still in front of a camera, um, and so there, what, what really drives a podcast is the quality of sound. I, I, I don't know you, if you had that kind of experience yourself, Mark, or do you have a thought on that? Is that maybe me and we're being a little too rigid on that issue? No, certainly. Um, I think that kind of goes back to actually like what Paul was saying, that, that intimacy in, mm-hmm. of, having that, of having those headphones on is if, if there's good sound quality, it, it makes that relationship all the more, I don't know, real closer maybe right yeah where if it's poor sound quality you know it's it feels like there's a barrier between you and the voice speaking to you that it's maybe being you know brought to you through some you know a process that's sure. that wasn't meant to be a, you know a relationship um oh that's so, a great point yeah, yeah. I, I i i think mark's absolutely right i, I think uh I say you know b- before we start recording um uh, Mark had a different set of headphones on, and uh, when he was speaking, uh, a hiss was coming mm-hmm. through because uh, the microphone would activate when we spoke. And I just said, "Hey, could we maybe change that out?" And um, because that intimacy, uh, I think, kind of gets broken when you're reminded that there's technology kind of in between you and the other person. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So I can a little bit more on that sound quality, though. Going back to uh, recording in my van, uh, mm-hmm. speaking to, uh, a, it was a MacBook. Sorry, I'm going to keep making these plugs for Mac. But, um, <laughs> you I go have. right ahead, Mark. It's, you go what right. I, it's, what, it's what I had. Okay. If they want to send me a new one, that's fine. I'm not saying they need to. Um, it is getting the hard drives a little full, but um, I noticed, you know, even in um, a place with pretty good sound quality in, in my, in my van with upholstered roofs. And, you know, I got, it's, it's a camper so I can pull curtains. Um, the sound still didn't sound 
quite like what I wanted it to. So uh, what I did, even just like little kind of DIY tricks the trade is I made a little kind of backing track um, that had some like filled recordings of like bird calls and a little just ah. kind of like ambient music that, you know, I actually originally was using um, kind of an ambient track from an artist and, you know, figured out really quickly, I don't have, um, I don't have rights. <laughs> to be oh, playing. Yeah. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't have rights to be playing. So I didn't really, and those are things you figure out when you're doing this, right? right. You can't just be playing full songs um, unless you have procured rights for those songs. Or I think there's lots of other little kind of minutia that might work depending on what program you use. Sure. Um, but, you know, I had to compensate for that. And so I kind of made, you know, and then, then I also added a bunch of reverb to, to my vocals and kind of like twist all that you're saying, you know, you got to work with that a little bit. So on the garage band, you can kind of tweak the reverb and, and the ambience and these things so that, you know, it, it wasn't, maybe it's, it's not quite that uh, having a conversation uh, sound, but when I layer all these things together, um, you know, it's basically an art project. It sounds like a <laughs> guy in a, in a, you know, out on the, in, in the desert in a van somewhere, you know, kind of like a dreamy weird, you know, and that was kind of, you know, so these are, they're all compensation moves, mm -hmm. but, um, it, it made kind of a, I feel like it gave it an interesting, um, flavor that was, it was all of its own as well, you know? And so, well, and there, there comes that creativity piece. And I think that's something that doesn't really get talked about in podcasts as much because it is only one medium, right? Which is sound. Um, but there is that, that creativity point comes in is what do I want ultimately to produce? And, and so you using obviously your sound editing program, you were able to get the sound you wanted. And that was a creative choice on your part, right? There wasn't a formula that you use. There wasn't, it was like, no, this is what I'm, overall the message I'm sharing, and this is part of that message. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know on the work on, on some of the other podcasts that I do that aren't associated here, uh, I do the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I don't add the, the bird tweets or the cricket rug with their <laughs> legs together, but, but at the same time, you know, I, I, you run the filters and things like that to not necessarily distort the voice, but to enhance, in my opinion, you know, what I want that sound to, um, to go to, uh, the voice I want um, my audience to hear. And so, um, and again, that's not manipulating, um, it's not twisting, or, or it's just uh, mm -hmm. adding that creative component. And I think that's something that doesn't get touched on about a lot is the creativity that it takes to do a podcast. This is a creative outlet. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't put it on the same line as maybe, you know, art or photography or, or painting or something like that, but it is still a creative piece. Well, I, I, again, sometimes I, I think sometimes uh, um, what you're doing is you're trying to uh, correct or enhance some um, maybe, um, features or sound quality that your microphone might be lacking because uh, sometimes you record on different mics every mic has a different a sound of its own yeah um, and if if what you're trying to go for is a more richer deeper tone and a voice yeah you might go through a uh, garage band or or say uh premiere uh, uh, adobe audition mm -hmm. to try to enhance that vocal so that uh, you have a deeper deeper richer sound uh, again because you know, you try to make that connection with your audience um, and you're saying, well, this sounded a little weak. Um, but sometimes here's the thing. We could talk about the quality of audio and trying to perfect that quality of audio. But people are also, I feel, and I know I, I am in my own personal listening of podcasts, I can be forgiving if the subject matter is that intriguing. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm not talking about a buzzing sound or really, you know, poor audio quality. I, th I think that's hard to get by, but I think that you're forgiving it and maybe not perfect sound because the conversation or that the people are having is so good that you go, I'm just going to go with it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think I bet, especially I've been right at the beginning of, of the pandemic when a lot of my favorite podcasts um, started having to talk over Zoom. And I felt this immediate, like, oh, this is horrible. Like, you know, like, and that's, <laughs> you know, I felt like right that initial reaction was like, this is not the, like, you know, because before I felt like I was a third person in the room. In the right, exactly. 
And then all of a sudden I didn't, but then, you know, I think we all just got so used to talking on Zoom that now I have no problem yep. listening to an interview on Zoom. And I feel like instead of being the third person in the room, maybe I'm just the, the third square on the screen. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because exactly. I understand it. I had the context now sure. to, to take it. Uh, Mark, you're so right. Because uh, um, previously we had done our podcast recording uh, at the studio at uh, Idaho State University. Uh, mm-hmm. And we would just schedule time and go down there. And then when the pa- pandemic hit, we, we said, uh, how are we going to do this to go? Oh, we'll do it through zoom. And, uh, we didn't have the equipment initially. So we, you know, we had to use what we had at the time and you're right. The audio quality was much poorer, but we can, we you know, you, you sally forth and you go, Hey, we got to, you know, cause uh, again, consistent content as well. Consistent content. You go, Hey, we have a podcast episode coming out on Wednesday. We're still going to do that. Mm-hmm. We'll just, and, but as time went on, you know, you make, you know, get, equipment to improve that but but you're right i i think especially with the pandemic you making more allowances or you're just fine with the difference of audio quality because now zoom or the audio of different zoom windows is so common nowadays that you just go yep i hear this at work all the time yeah yep. i know what that is so let's talk about content for just a minute you um when you st- Let's talk about the podcast you started during the pandemic. Did you have guests on there on that podcast, or was it just you sharing thoughts and ideas? Or uh, I mean, and don't you don't have to? I'm not asking you to go into the gory details, but what was the format and the content of, of the podcast that you've kind of been working with so far? Um, so I've I've kind of helped out a couple of friends just by either kind of being a, a guest like in this format on theirs or helping them kind of figure out that editing piece mm-hmm. um which is a lot of work so that's another thing about <laughs> it is you know so that's, that's a piece it we is. didn't talk about earlier anybody yeah. can make a podcast right you just gotta <laughs> be completely interesting um you got to have the equipment and, right <laughs> and um you also have to be able to advertise for yourself Oh, sure. and you have to be able to edit, which edit. is, you know, that's, there's a learning curve there. And like, I've just, I played with GarageBand enough just um, in my life, kind of um, you know, has a hobby, just making yeah. music and making, and, and, you know, making tunes that I could just as a hobby completely, right. but um, right. that I knew the controls, I knew how to control it. So if, you know, I, as I've had a couple friends kind of, say, hey, we want to start something. Can we have a little tutorial or maybe you can kind of help us engineer these first couple uh, just to kind of show us how to dial in everything, how to chop things up, how to move them around. So there's that experience with the the podcast I was I, w- I was doing. Like I said, I was, I was basically just sending it to uh, my friends far away, right? Uh, all places dispersed, people that I've known from childhood through through graduate school and beyond and um the idea was that the pandemic had just begun um i was kind of getting a lot of texts from friends you know it's it scary time it was a very scary time sure i don't know absolutely. if you remember those first few months it was kind of terrifying no one really knew what was going on and there was kind of a lot of worry you know i was at home i have all this vinyl that i've bought mostly in bargain bins over the years that like I might've given one spin and been like, meh, meh. there's one good track on there or something. So I spend all this time at home and my son was about one year old. So like he just kind of sits there like a flower pot. And so <laughs> I would just be, so I kind of just spent a lot of time. I was like, I'm just going to go through these records again and actually give them like a deep listen. Um, and after a while, I'd be like, oh, there's a, there's a good, there's a little choice nugget right there. There's a choice nugget right there. And the whole time I'm also, you know, seeing these text messages from my friends and trying to kind of get through this myself a little bit, mm-hmm. um, you know, thinking about issues of like, you know, control, like we all lost so much control over our lives during that time, but being able to kind of give into that a little bit, um, you know, uh, to, to kind of go with that flow a little bit um, and being able to recognize those things and you know, as I started getting all these, I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to make a little, a little pirate radio broadcast of these choice nuggets. So I had to figure out how to get this vinyl 
into GarageBand, which was a process. I have a record player that has a USB cord that I had to use Audacity, which Paul told me last week is giving my computer a bunch of problems. So once again, yep. if Apple needs to send me a new MacBook, um, that one's pretty jammed up. Yeah. Uh, yes, right. So I right. put those on there. And then in between, I kind of talk about the music. I just love music. I like talking about music. I want to expose my, like, you know, just to give my friends something else to think about. So it was all like kind of good times music. Um, you know what I'd call kind of like good vibes music. Yeah. I play a small set. I talk about the bands. I talk a little bit. It's kind of like about how I'm, how I'm kind of seeing a lot of this and coping with it and then play another set. So once again, I can't put this out for distribution. I'm playing a bunch of unlicensed music. Right. Um, right, right, right. So I was kind of, you know, doing it through SoundCloud and I just send out like a one burst to this text group of friends. Sure. And, you know, it's just something for that, that first six or eight months. It was as much for me <laughs> as right. anyone else. You know? There you go. Just yeah. like, I mean, it's what I was doing already, but actually you know, it was I, a fun project it kind of kept me it kept me entertained it helped me process all of my thoughts and feelings during it yeah um, and I, yeah. I think you hit the thing uh, at least from mine and, and i'll hit this again and maybe the, i'm harping on too hard but it was for you right mm-hmm. and i think that to me is just the foundation of a re- of a podcast is if you are doing this for your because you like it because you enjoy it because it's you know, and, and you're willing to go through all that learning curve of all those different things. I think to me, that is the foundation of a good podcast is how invested are you into it as a outlet or as a creative piece for you? Um, and, and versus, well, I'm just trying to get to 10,000 listens a month. Yeah. yeah. I, Jason and I had said this in a previous episode, if, if your intent is to start a podcast because you want to get 10,000 listeners, that's, the wrong reason to start a podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, see, that's, I don't even know how to go about that. I don't even know what that would look like. <laughs> that's well, look, that's another have... part about this, right? Is like, as you know, some of my friends, very gracious as they are, um, would text me and be like, hey, this is really, this is really awesome. I love getting these every week. You know, I look forward to every Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I get some music for the weekend and maybe, you know, I, you know, I, I don't get to see any of my friends. At least I get to hear your voice when I go on a walk or something. Um, you know, it's, it, it is for me, but even as I, like, this is good, maybe you should do something like this. Well, then that brings up what, those things that I was talking about, those right. next steps. Well, okay. I can't, we can't actually do this because it's unlicensed music. Where can you play music? Maybe if you're like a Apple music DJ on their kind of radio app, um, there's a couple other apps that have some, like they have, like, I think that anchor has, uh, is owned by Spotify. So there's right. some kind of like loose restrictions on the amount of like, you pay like, 30 seconds or something like that. Right. Right. But even then the other ideas of like, well, then how do I get it out there? How do I distribute? How, like, what would I even do, um, to, to make this go further? And, and I think that that's been, what's been interesting, uh, interesting to me and and maybe starting this podcast with the career center is um is figuring out those next steps a little bit as much as anything mark we actually have some of those next steps in our previous episodes of yeah, the no way. Oh, <laughs> yeah we do <laughs> i should have listened to those before you should have you should have <laughs> well but you know to summarize i mean you just need you need multiple platforms right yeah. um and ultimately you know if we talk about sweet talk for just a minute i mean the saving grace for us is we have a dedicated website. Um, and on that website, we can have um, not only our written blog, but we have um, a landing page specifically for the podcast. And then after that, then of course, you, you got to create that RSS feed. And we talked all about this before and then being able to put that on the SoundClouds and on Spotify and Apple yeah. Podcasts and being able to upload those automatically and, 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 and then have your social media then reinforce that. But uh, so there is no one single stream, mm-hmm. so to speak, that you can, um, you know, but, but you have to be willing to go, you know, even Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, those are your social media outlets, but you have to have that podcast on all those different platforms um, well, and, and able to do that. And, you know, Jason and I, uh, in, in previous, so, I mean, that RSS feed is king. 
your RSS feed is king. And I think, uh, Jason, you mentioned that you can have that RSS feed originate from SoundCloud. Is that correct? Yeah, we do. We, yeah. And, you know, we pay a little subscription for that. Um, and again, no plug to SoundCloud. Um, and I know, and, and, and candidly speaking, and, and this is, they'll probably kick me off now for saying this, it's not the most popular sound audio platform out there. I mean, it was at one time and, 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 and it hasn't been for a bit, but the reality is it does what it, we need it yeah, to do. It's a good place to originate that RSS feed. Um, and then that RSS feed, you can feed to the other formats. Right. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, so SoundCloud is a good place to originate the RSS feed. Um, and that's how you get your, that's how you, that's how you start it. Right. <laughs> you start it, so. And here's a little interesting thing too. And this something Mark, just keep down the road too, is um, you're going to want to on SoundCloud, I, and again, no plug intended. Um, but what I notice when I check our SoundCloud numbers and I check numbers, um, you know, quote, quite frequently is about once a month, um, I get my entire playlist gets a hit. Mm. And so what's happening is, is some other entity out there, whether it be another podcasting platform is up automatically running through, um, our entire playlist and then kicking up whatever it does, whatever's been, you know, uh, uploaded no, new to it. And mm -hmm. I can't file, I, I can't track that as much as well as I'd hope to. SoundCloud doesn't give me the analytical ability to decide, you know, to see where that's coming from. Mm -hmm. But what it d does do is it counts as a play. And, um, and that knows that someone else out there is taking our podcast and, you know, putting it on a platform. So, I mean, it, 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 it just, there's this natural, again, there's this natural growth to, to this when you're putting the content out and the content has value or a meaning or, uh, and, and again, whether it's a small audience or a large audience, um, you know, it will get found. It mm -hmm. just doesn't get found overnight. Um, but, but to assume that you're going to put a podcast out there and not be and and, and, and social media all its horrible things and things that we don't like about social media. The reality is it is the platforms which, yeah. you know, people come to learn new things. So, yes. Yes. So, so that, you know, that, that's kind of cool. So I guess Mark, as you're kind of moving forward with your podcast uh, with work a little bit, what, what are you, you, you kind of did this on your own. Can you talk a little bit uh, in a little bit more detail about, um, so you kind of were doing this during the pandemic for yourself. You're finding your own uh, processing ability doing this, help you kind of get through the pandemic. And then you said, wait a minute, uh, why isn't work doing this? Why, why aren't we doing this at work? Mm -hmm. um, where did that, how did that process happen? Um, well, I mean, I think in part, I think it's because um, I saw on a ISU probably newsfeed something about sweet talk oh right um, on yeah and, <laughs> um and i was like well that's a great idea but also there's so many things going on the first part of that pandemic for just our services at the career center we you know could no longer have these well we figured it out how to have student interactions via zoom but those first few months i think everyone was kind of we, we didn't really know what to do to to provide our services right so we did a couple things um i excitedly um, kind of took on a whole social media, um, not, not myself, <laughs> like I, but I kind of tried to get like, you know, uh, the people in our, in our group, um, thinking about how to really utilize our social media while well, everyone's at home and scrolling through their phones. Let's put something in front of their face. Let's show them what jobs are still popping up. Let's right. try to, you know, like, so that kind of, first, so really what it was, was a lot of this thinking about how do we still do our job? when we can't be at work seeing students interacting with students and I saw you guys' podcast on something and I thought, well, that's, that's genius. You know, that's anyone can listen to a podcast anywhere. Um, you know, this is something that we should probably be doing. Um, and as I said, I'd already had interest in it. It was kind of cultivating, you know, trying to figure out how it all worked a little bit before I just dived in for myself. Um, and, you know, it's taken me a while to come around to, to really figuring out how we're going to integrate it. 
And, you know, and, and, and it doesn't matter if we're, you know, hopefully transitioning out of the pandemic. We'll see what happens with this Delta yeah. variant as things start up. Um, but either way, I mean, as we said, the market is not saturated. People will still be looking for content. And, you know, a lot of, I guess, also, Jason, is just why this format is, I love, like you guys, talking to people about their stories. Yep. Yeah. I love stories. And this is something that I have loved about working in the career center since I started here uh, right is, is these ideas about how people got from point A to, you know, point J, wherever they are now, you know, whatever yeah. job they're in now, like, where did they start out? What were they originally interested in? What did you find out about yourself along the way? We do all these assessments in the career centers, like Myers-Briggs assessments about your personality, you know, are you an introvert or are you an extrovert or is your you know, these things. And then even like those Clifton strengths finders that we've done a lot at the university. And one of the things I found out in that is that one of my, my strengths is that I love having long conversations with people and, <laughs> and taking in that information and integrating. I was like, wow, this is all just coming together. It's all coming together right here. Now. Um, and so, you know, just this idea, and I think it's so valuable for everyone to hear, especially our, especially our students. Um, the the rocky paths to, to a degree that everyone has had getting to where they are right? right you know and we all had to find out things about ourselves you find out that that dream job that you thought was a dream job um paid great but the hours just didn't really line up with your your values in life or even that you evolved right maybe sure. that job was great for you and then all of a sudden you're like well i kind of feel like maybe yep. settling down or maybe I feel like not settling down and traveling the world. Um, right. So, you know, you go right. through these different kind of phases and I think it's so important to hear how people figure those out, what they did, right. What they learned from, you know, along the way. Um, and, you know, I think it's just a great opportunity to kind of engage not only like not to have this information just for our students to kind of hear this, but also to kind of engage our campus community in this reflective process a little bit so that every single advisor, professor, faculty member who listens um, can kind of, you know, have heard some of these stories and pathways, think about their own. And then whenever they're meeting with a student or talking yep. to a class, they can speak to the fact that like, you know, it's, it's a long and winding road. Yep. Yeah. yeah. To, so, and, to, to and, and that's the whole thing is, you know, um, podcast is a great way of get getting stories out, uh, making those connections. Um, again, because of the way the formatting works, people will find you because they're looking for those type of stories and you know, hopefully stay engaged. Um, and again, if they find you, they'll turn into loyal listeners. And again, people love stories. Uh, people, we, we are, are a culture of stories. We um, and we take in all those fictionalized stories, but um, the ones that really... Uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've been doing this podcast for um, almost three years now, and um, I, there's been times that I, I, I have teared because the real human connection, because it's not, not something written on a page. It's something that they, someone experienced mm -hmm. and they lived through. And I, I think that people will always seek that out. Yep. Yep. And so with that, uh, Mark, what, when's your, when's this podcast for the Career Center taken off? What? How are people going to be able to find it? Can you give us a little insight just on that? Right. Yeah. So we are like, we are still in the process of developing some of those specifics, but for right now we've been working with KISU, um, the, the local public radio affiliate based yep. here at ISU. And um, we are aiming for, I think, late October, early November for our first episodes. And we're trying to do kind of... Um, a hybrid so there will be one aired episode a month mm -hmm. but we're also going to have um either weekly or bi-weekly episodes that'll be on a podcast page on kisu's page very cool so you know you know a lot of these things we've talked about um it's you know there's so many trade-offs right to to kind of doing it all in-house like like yeah. you guys are you mm -hmm. complete autonomy um for the most part um and you know being able to set up things when you want them not having to be beholden to uh the schedules of the studio time let's say um 
or things like that. Uh, well, also for myself, like I need to, I still want to learn a lot more about this. And so, um, and I really am a little bit scared of all the work that it might take. <laughs> so working yeah. with KISU really helps me kind of scaffold that, you know? Um, yeah, and, at least to begin, I can use their studios. I don't have to worry about investing in mics or editing equipment for right now, right? So we can kind of hit the ground, kind of get the, the ball kind of rolling, snowballing. I can learn more about it. And then, right. you know, if we want to go from biweekly to weekly content, if we're feeling like it fits in our schedule, uh, if we need a different modality uh, for actually making our thing, that can happen. But as you're saying also, uh, KISU is going to take a lot of that, hopefully a lot of that, um, that marketing burden. Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. still obviously be putting it out through different marketing channels, but having it on the radio, um, is pretty huge. And right. so yeah. like, that's pretty good. So, yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's a genius idea. Um, and I think it, I think you'll find, um, exactly what it sounds like you're looking for too, is an opportunity to, to get your, get your foot in the water. Right. And then as the podcast grows and develops, you'll be able to have that flexibility to change it or to make mm -hmm. uh, small changes or subtle changes that um, allow the podcast to, to kind of become what it's supposed to become. I, I, I haven't done this and I think it would be interesting to do Paul uh, is to go back and to listen to maybe you know, the first five or six episodes that we did with Sweet Talk. Oh, man, I, then, I, don't, I don't know. Man. And compare them, <laughs> uh, right? I don't, I don't know. And then compare them to where we're at now. And I think we would, I mean, just in the format alone, the format has stayed pretty consistent, but, you know, how uh, how the conversations work and the guests, and I, it would be, it would, that would be interesting to hear because even this podcast, as strict as the format is, in other words, uh, Sweet Talk, that 20 minute with a timer, um, the format has been consistent, but I think the show itself has, has evolved to a certain degree. So, well, you know, when we first started, I was just a cameraman. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I can't believe you guys also ran cameras. I'd... Oh yeah, no, no, we, oh, we, we, we had a, we had three, we had a three camera set up on a, and a desk and a um, live audience. We had a live, live audience because we had all oh, our wow. interns, all our interns would come and be, and then we would take questions from our, our live audience. Um, mm -hmm. And they wow. would join in and, uh, if and people then, uh, would tell a joke every, you could hear everyone laughing in the background. I mean, it was, it was very dynamic in that way. That's so. fun, but that's a lofty undertaking. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I so. just, <laughs> I just told you how I'm trying to dial back <laughs> yeah, no, sitting no. alone in a van. Basically. So, so, <laughs> so Mark, uh, um, uh, we, we did have some interns that helped us out, uh, greatly helped us out. Um, so um, career and, pet CPIs, by the way, we love our CPI. CPI yeah, we love our CPIs. Yeah. Um, um, and, yeah so, uh, so we, we did have uh, some help getting uh, things produced and, and out the door, but you know, the, you know, it's sad that, you know, the pandemic made us change, but it also kind of made us rethink on how to format the podcast. Because when we had it before in the studio, scheduling guests, and that's the one thing we'll, maybe we should touch on just one mm -hmm. last thing is scheduling guests. Mm -hmm. um, to have them come to ISU campus on a particular day was very hard. Um, yes. It was, uh, you know, and so what we would do is we try to schedule it all in one day, like have uh, four guests lined up so that they came in, did a half hour segment and then left. And then we go have another one per, because we'd have the studio for a day. Yeah. And then when the pandemic hit, we had to go to zoom and Jason, you can speak to how e much easier it was to get people to schedule for, to become guests on the show. That's right. As the unofficial booker, <laughs> I, by the way, I learned that a booker is an official title. Yeah. Yes, it is. For sure. So <laughs> as the unofficial booker of sweet talk, I can't tell you how relieved I was when we went to Zoom. <laughs> to be able to type at the bottom of your email, we are flexible in schedule. Please let me know what works for you. I well, mean, that, that... <laughs> yeah. and that is one of the things that's been nice about uh, talking with KISU is there because this, because the year, because the COVID year has changed how we do things, they're open to um, Zoom interviews. Oh, oh right. great, great. So great. I can be in the studio. So it still has to be kind of like, I still have to line up basically when they have studio time openings uh -huh. but the other person does not have to physically come down there 
and line yeah. up like that, which is is amazing. Yeah, the idea, like as I told you, if I had my druthers, I would love just to have a one hour plus conversation with somebody at a table, you know, yes. with some yeah. coffee and you know really be able to kind of break through on some things uh but also yeah the 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 idea of having to logistically get people to be able to come to isu at very specific times and sit down is uh very limiting yeah Yeah. it is it it, it is very limited because we all have you know busy lives and schedules and uh you know it's it's trying to get them to be because you want to hear their story and you don't want to uh, the more rich you are, the more likely they, they're going to say no. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, and so if we can be flexible, the, the yeses increased drastically when we went to a Zoom format. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, you know, uh, kind of just winding this down a little bit, I, I just want to hit one of the, the themes I think that's come out of this conversation, at least from my perspective, and, and maybe you guys got a little bit different one. So please feel free to, to pipe in, but you know, I think we go back to, you know, um, the point of being committed to the idea of the podcast, um, the, the conversation, um, whether it's a talking head, um, whether you have something you want to say and, and you don't want, and you want to say it, um, or whether you want guests on the show or whether you want to tell story or whether you want to share different fat, you know, whatever that, uh, topic or the purpose of the podcast is almost, I would say, irrelevant to your own personal commitment to it. Um, and if you are personally committed to it and you're finding the joy in doing this, then you know I think um, that you're already halfway to a successful podcast as far as um, eventually getting the listenership. So I don't know, I, that, that's kind of my takeaway from this conversation. Um, I don't know, Paul or, or Mark, if you guys had something a little different. Well, I, I you know, this is our, fifth episode in this series and i think maybe that's one of the most important things out of the entire series is uh that uh that commitment to uh, releasing a podcast on a regular basis because it's a and being able to meet that commitment easily because you are passionate about the subject material yep yep yeah for certain i mean i um, you know i'm excited to go back and listen to those first four episodes no, <laughs> right on, right please, on. Please, wait, 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 wait. I, I have to say this. I have to say it because we never. And, and please like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> oh, yes, certainly, certainly will. Um, if I had social media, I would be <laughs> resharing all over the place. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess as far as you know, advice for people podcasting from from people who have done this is, or people who are thinking about this is one. You can you can do it. Right. Like that's for me, one of the biggest takeaways from, from all my experiences, you can do it. Yep. Oh yeah. Right. Now, whether or not um, you're going to get what you want out of it, well, that depends on your commitment that, yep. that you guys were just talking about. Again, so, back to the commitment. That's a great point. That's commitment. a great point. Uh, so you know, so uh, anyone can do it. If you're there for 10,000 views, wrong idea. You know, I, I, I could s- yeah, I can tell you right now when uh, my favorite, when one of my favorite podcast episodes doesn't have the episode released on the regular schedule date, my first reaction is, why? Why, why don't you have my podcast? Because it's my podcast. I am subscribed. <laughs> You're supposed to have this on Monday morning. Why don't you have this on Monday morning? Because right. this is the thing I listen to while I get ready for work. Right. How will um, I get and, dressed today? How will, <laughs> how will I get dressed today? <laughs> hey, um, la- one last thing before we wrap up. Um, I think we should all share uh, maybe a po- our favorite podcast or a new podcast that we discovered. Okay. Why don't you go first, Paul? I am going to share um, my one of my new favorite podcasts is Did You Get My Text? Oh. Um, it is a podcast with um, Patton Oswald and Meredith Salinger. They're um, a married couple. Um, you probably uh, know Meredith Salinger as the star of The Journey of Natty Gann. Uh, when she was a, uh, a young child and uh, Patton Oswald is a comedian, a stand-up comedian, and also a star of all kinds of things. Uh, most recently he's in the um, um, 
animated series Modoc on Hulu. And basically it's a conversation between them because they both live busy lives. And they, um, so a lot of times they're like passing each other in the hall and they take the time to talk about, did you get my text? And they talk about text <laughs> that they share with each other and give it more context. Very cool. I, uh, this one is going to kind of sound, uh, you're putting me on the uh, a spot, Paul. So I have listened to a lot of different podcasts um, and I have a very eclectic um, listening um, uh, palette. There you go. But I will tell you the one that I have been listening to most recently that I can't seem to stop. It's called the West Wing Weekly. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> and I am a huge fan of the television show, The West Wing. Um, I it was on NBC years ago. Um, you know, uh, it 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 just it was a great show. I've seen it. Uh, Netflix. When I was on Netflix, I watched the entire series uh, one time. In fact, uh, I was in a pretty serious uh, accident. Um, and I had to do recovery for about a month before I could go back to work and I couldn't move. And I had to sit on the couch yeah. and I streamed West wing, like for the second time, third time, you know? Um, and now I found this podcast where, um, these two individuals, uh, get on and they go episode by episode. And, um, there we go. And I, I just relive each episode with uh, one of the uh, one is an actor on the show, um, uh, Will Bailey uh, is the character's name. His name is Josh. Uh, I forgot what his name is, his last name. And they go through and they talk about all the ins and outs of the episode. And I can't. I, I mean, I'll, I'll listen to it on my commute. I listen to it on my walk. So I just I, at least once or twice a week, I'm listening to that uh, that that podcast. That's awesome. I know many a West Wing fanatic. There is a cult of West Wing. I'm telling you, it, 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 is. it is a cult, isn't it? Yeah, it and is. Just for the record. Seem, well, to be honest, it's a very well uh, read and well spoken cult. So yes. That's, that's... Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm proud to say that during that period of my uh, recovery, uh, my youngest son, who uh, was in his high school at the time, sat down and watched an episode with me and then he started uh oh. streaming the west wing so i i got my son who by the way wasn't born when the episode re- sure. uh, ah. series really ran so i i converted i converted someone over I made you another cult that's, how, that's how cults work <laughs> yes, yeah, that yes. is how cults work. <laughs> if we if we can't convert you we breed you <laughs> we breed them right we breed right. new members yeah well uh yeah i love this question because there's actually like, there's kind of a follow-up on it for me so like Jason, um, something that I have just been can't just listening nonstop, can't stop listening um, for a few months now because it came out over a year ago. I just got turned on to it. Um, not for everyone, but it's called No Dogs in Space. Oh. And it is, um, well, it's, it's a kind of an oral history of punk rock through basically the lens of different bands. So oh, they that will, sounds cool. So they'll, and each episode is like three hours long. And <laughs> it's this husband and wife, this husband and wife duo, they're both comedians who just love punk rock. And so they'll start with a band and they'll talk about everything around that band, what their influences were, where they came from, their whole story, their progression. Um, you know, and it's extremely, extremely well researched. Like it is a complete oral history of not just punk rock but like the of music of those eras and so in then each little it'll be like three episodes of, of these different bands um and they're both really funny they're just having a conversation about this music but they've also done a ton of research you can tell um and like i said i'm i'm just like i'm a music person like i just love putting that in for that useless information that will never yes. give me any money. It'll never, no, um, no, I love it, stuff. I love filling my hard drive with that. Yeah. Um, in fact, Mark, it's probably worse because now you're going to, you seek out those albums on vinyl <laughs> and you go, I'm going to spend money. I already, I, there's already been quite a bit going yeah. down that road. Right. Um, however, this goes to something else that you said, Paul, is they, they finished their punk rock 
series. Like took like a year. And they haven't put, they say they're going to put out another one, but oh. I haven't seen anything. And I do not know what to listen to right now. Like <laughs> I, when I go, yeah. Cause that's like when I go for a run, when I go to the grocery store, this is, I have these two people talking about music with me, you know, and, and I'm, I'm like, I'm a little bit lost. I'm scrolling through. I'm trying, you said, what am I listening to? Yeah, that's what I was listening to. I'm trying to find something new. Yeah, to and, and it's terrible because they, they they like finish because you know sometimes it's, these podcasts come out and they are a limited thing because they're gonna cover like the, uh, a podcast about uh, hey we're gonna cover all the Stephen King novels mm-hmm. and then they they get through all the Stephen King novels and go okay we're done. Uh, yeah, uh, and then what? You move on to Dean Koontz? I don't right, 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 right. I mean, I mean <laughs> what? I, I I've been loyal. I've been loyal. <laughs> So, and, and that's, but the thing is, you said you found it, found the show after it had already been existing for quite a while, right? Yeah, like seven months or so. Yeah. So, and that's the one thing I do want to point out about podcasts um, is the fact that that content lives forever. Yep. Um, so, Jason will um, talk about this um, the fact that we have show episodes that we had posted like t- a year ago, two years ago, and we'll find that people, hey someone listen to that episode um be, because they still exist and mm-hmm. in many cases they're still relevant and mm-hmm. and more importantly that what i'm finding out is it's just not one person listens so um i'll go on and look at our, our analytics and i'll see an episode that we put out two years ago and all of a sudden it'll have you know it'll have half the listens um compared to a brand new episode so meaning you know if, if you're looking at your monthly what am I getting in a month? And I'm, I see an episode that's two years old that get that, that almost got half the listens for a month. I mean, that says something it's really yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, so people find it and they go forward. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting that way. Hey fellas, we're going to wrap this up. And, and with that being said, Paul, um, obviously we've got to remind people to check us out at cetrain.isu.edu, but more mm-hmm. importantly, email us at um, cetrain at isu.edu. Um, with any questions, comments, um, share with us your favorite podcast. We'd like to know. Yeah, um, I'd like to see that list. I'm yeah. looking for a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm right. Mark needs a new, new podcast. And, yeah, yeah, and Mark's yeah, Mark's Mark's minus minus a podcast right now. That's right. Um, so, and also, uh, if you have any questions about the series, uh, if you haven't listened to the other episodes, go back and listen to them. And if you have some more technical questions about uh, podcasting, please uh, email us, and we'll try to answer those for you. That's right. Mark, thank you very much for being on the show. Yes, thank you so much. It's hey, been really great. And by the way, when you get yours up and running, let us know. Um, put something out on social media and we'll like and follow and subscribe. <laughs> and and, 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 and uh, we'll, let, we'll, let our, we'll let our listeners know when it's, when it's out. Yeah, yeah. We'd love to, actually. So, Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Um, the first time we talked, I just off of recording at an awesome time. Just chatting with you, picking your brands, seeing your relationship. Um, it's really awesome. Um, I appreciate I, I love being here. Thanks, Hi. man. It's appreciate great. it.